Yo, what is good, Killer Squad? The Hitman here, back with another video. So, if you guys went on NBA, you probably noticed that there is the finalist for all the awards. So today, we're gonna be doing our prediction for who wins the award, and hopefully, there will be cards for those awards, except for you know, obviously, Coach of the Year. So I'm excited about that. That's the reason I'm doing this video is because there is a possibility, the small possibility, that they will bring out new award winner cards. So we're gonna do our prediction. So uh, let's set like for 200 likes, and let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with me. So we're gonna start off. We're gonna finish it with the, um, I guess. MVP we're gonna start off with the coach of the year so coach of the year the finalists are Mike D'Antoni Greg Popovich and Eric Spolstra so in my opinion if we go by like overall wise as in the best season record you would go with Greg Popovich but I personally think it's gonna be Eric Spolstra think about the team he has his best players are Sam Whiteside which by himself he can't play make he needs someone to help him out but then you have Dion Waiter who's been playing absolutely like a beast Goran Dragic Going from a very bad team to almost making the playoff, especially in the last month, they went like, they went ham. If Dion, I honestly think if Dion Waiters did not get injured, they would have made the playoff and they would have had, they would have been able to make um, LeBron, maybe, just maybe give him a little bit of challenge in the East. The East is really, really weak, I know. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a, you know, Chicago cap. I'm also, I have a Raptors cap, but that's not the point. Honestly, I think it's going to be Eric Spolstra. I don't think they're going to do any cards with that. It'd be very interesting to see if they do some kind of cards for the, the coaches, but I highly doubt it. So next up, we're going to go with six man of the year. This one is very, 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 like I guess, like a special situation. So you got three players. You got Andre Ugudala, you got Eric Gordon, and you got Lou William, of which two of them are on the same team. So first of all, I'm going to already eliminate Andre Ugudala because although he did really well off the bench, I don't think it compares really well to what Lou William and Eric Gordon does. And not only that, <laughs> Eric Gordon and Lou William are on a team that scores a ridiculous amount of points. Not, and the reason why I'm going to pick this player is because he did it for two different teams. Lou Williams played the six-man position for the Lakers. I almost said Clippers. For the Lakers and for the Rockets. And he absolutely destroyed it. Eric Gordon also, I think, deserves it. Although he did start a few games in the beginning, I would give it to Lou William because he is absolutely deserving also he had the six man before eric gordon probably deserves it a well to maybe get his first one so it's really close but i would give the slight edge to lou william considering he was six man for two teams which is <laughs> crazy absolutely crazy he could have won the award guaranteed in the, the lakers but you know what that's that's just me now we're gonna go with the most improved player now this is a very good one so there's three players you yanis ante the i'm gonna try to say ante tenkumpo Antetokounmpo, I don't know, I probably butchered that name. We got Rudy Gobert and Nikola Jokic. Ja 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 I can't say his name, guys, okay? I think it's like Jokic, Jokic, Jokic. I'm not sure, but so out of these three players, I like Rudy Gobert, but I'm going to eliminate him out there. I think the other two players' growth has been substantially greater than uh, Rudy Gobert, although Rudy Gobert, defensive beast this year. Amazing. We're going to talk about him afterwards as well. And then you got Yadis. I personally think that if we compare Nikola to last year, he has substantially grown. Like, just watching him play, now he almost basically averages. He doesn't average it, but he, like, almost gets triple doubles the game. He gets close. He has a lot of rebounds, a lot of assists. His assist game is on point. Scores the basket really nice. Yanis became, like, a, almost a superstar, like a threat in the league. He is one of the scariest players in the league, but I'm going to give the, the Joker, the Joker, because he is absolutely balling. He's definitely the most improved player. I kind of I kind of called that like a few months ago when I saw Joker play. I'm like, this guy's going to be the most improved player. I can give it to Giannis too, but having a Joker card would be really, uh, like, I don't know how they're going to be award winners. They're probably going to be really high overall. So Joker will be absolutely clutch. Now, next up, we got the Rookie of the Year. This one also just two players on the same team, of which one is Joel Embiid, then you got Dario Sarek, and we got Malcolm Brogdon. Now, a lot of people might want to think Joel Embiid. Yes, Joel Embiid did play phenomenally well, but I mean, in my opinion, he's been in the league for three years, which is kind of awkward even though it's your first year, but you've been training with all these people for three years, so I can get why you're still a rookie, but Dario Sarek or Malcolm Brogdon are the two runner-ups in my opinion. I like Joel Embiid, he was also hurt near the end of the year, didn't play as much, so he also had limited minutes, that's why it makes it really impressive what he's been doing. He like 20 points a game, at least 20 points a game, with like almost like 7-8 rebounds a game. Only 20 minutes, a 25 minutes a game, which is crazy, basically averages a point per minute, that's 
mind blowing, mind blowing, which is crazy. But the player that I think really, really deserves it. So there you sorry, let's be honest. High, lowest expectation from a player, not lowest expectation, but he didn't have much expectation coming in. This guy definitely blew those expectations. I, that's why I said have low expectations, never get disappointed. I didn't say that, but this is what I think. Then he's absolutely balling. He played really well, but you can't, you can't, you can't deny Malcolm Brodkin. Malcolm Brodkin, I don't even know if I said the name right, but him, I think he was drafted in the second round. No expectation. The guy is older than most of these guys, but he is definitely hands down the best rookie out of all these guys. This guy got his way into the starting lineup. He shoots phenomenally well. His defense is solid. You should, if you watch the Raptor games, which I obviously did, Brodkin would light us up. His defense is really solid. He is 100, not 100%. Never say, never be 100% about anything because you never know what can change. But I'm like 99% sure it's going to be Brodkin because Brodkin is absolutely a piece. And obviously, I believe that we should get an elite car for Brodkin, like a better elite car. I know we have one for the playoff, but Brodkin, absolutely, I think it's rookie of the year. Now, finally, we have, oh, not finally. I forgot this. We have two more. We got defensive player of the year. This one is, I think, the hardest. This is the hardest. See, there, I could have like punned that with the MVP one with Harden, hardest. That, that, that could have been a thing that, all right, I'll stop, I'll stop. But we're gonna be serious now. Draymond Green, Kawhi Leonard, Rudy Gobert. So Rudy Gobert got nominated for two, I guess, awards. So did Kawhi Leonard. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is also in the MVP race, but we're gonna talk about that later. So out of these players, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eliminate Kawhi. You guys are gonna roast me, but what do you mean don't live in the Kawhi? Kawhi is a great defensive player. Don't get me wrong, he's really good. But compared to these two other players, I don't think his defense played as well as those two. His offense, though, is substantial. He is definitely, I think, the best two-way player in the league. Hands down, one of the best, if not the best, two-way player in the league. His offensive scoring is ridiculous. So his offense is really good. And his defense is good, but I'm gonna compare it to the plays of Draymond and Rudy Gobert. It's absolutely crazy. So Rudy Gobert, when he's on the floor, he is absolutely a monster getting blocks. People are scared to go in the paint against him. He will get you mad amount of blocks, but his slight weakness, he can't really get to the perimeter as fast because he is a center. So in our league, there is a lot of players that shoot threes, which is a downside to if you can't really edge to the three-point line. So that's why his defensive plays is not as good as Draymond Green. Draymond Green is literally the floor general. Without Draymond on the floor, Golden State's defense is, it's not trash, but it's not as good. Draymond will legit stop the alley-oop. He can guard anybody, literally guard anybody from the point guard position onto the center position. There's super depth lineup, he plays the center. He will stop everything. His, he blocks people. The Draymond Green, I think, deserves it. He might not actually get it because, you know what, Kawhi Leonard, people might be like, yeah, Kawhi Leonard played like a beast. I think Kawhi Leonard played like a beast. This is close. This is close. Don't get it twisted, guys. Don't get it twisted. This is close, close race, but I think it's going to be Draymond Green. I'm not just saying this because I want another Draymond Green. I would love, I would love another Kawhi. I would love another Kawhi, but Draymond, hands down, like, and also a lot of people didn't realize this in the beginning. They're like, oh, Draymond, what, are, what is he doing, really? What is he doing? Not only that, he's, he doesn't score as much, but he gets the rebounds, he gets the assists, he gets the steals. Man, this guy is a beast, a monster. I think I said, I think I found, I found. I think I said monster or beast like 800 times this video, but that's okay. Now, finally, finally, this is the moment everyone's gonna be talking about. So we got three finalists, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, and Westbrook. And a lot of people be like, what do you mean LeBron's not in the finalists? What, what do you mean LeBron not an MVP? Uh, well, it's kind of hard to put him in when you got someone who averaged a triple-double, someone who almost averaged a triple-double, and I think the best two-way player in the league. It's final three, it's not final four. Obviously, LeBron is probably the fourth one in here. So, my personal guess, if it was, so you gotta take into consideration that it's a season award, not a playoff award, because James Harden played like trash in the playoffs. Westbrook played well. So based on those stats, we would just go, oh yeah, hands down, it is definitely gonna be Westbrook. I'm gonna be very be very honest. It's gonna be very close between two players. It's gonna be between Harden and Westbrook. I'm sorry, Kawhi, 
you're most likely not gonna win any award this year. That's based on my predictions. I'm sorry, but although Kawhi has been literally the center point of the Spurs offense, it's literally Spurs play with Kawhi or they lose. That's not necessarily true. I'm just kidding. They did win a few games without Kawhi, but right now in the playoff, that's how it seems. Kawhi is their focus point of the offense. He scores on offense and he plays on defense. He's literally the best two-way player in the league and that's why he's considered. But you gotta, you gotta put in consideration the other two players who literally almost average a tri triple-double. Westbrook, you can't, I, I just, I feel like it's hard to not give him the MVP considering he averaged a triple-double. It's hard, but what if he does it next year again? You can't give it to him back and back. I honestly think James Harden is the one who's going to get it. It's just based on season. So season-wise, he played very well, almost as well as Westbrook, but he led his team to a higher team overall, I guess, uh, conference. He basically, what, third, third Western? Third Western compared to, what, six? I'm not 100% sure for Westbrook. So yeah, but again, in his defense, Westbrook didn't have much support players. So it's going to be really close, but I'm going to give a slight edge to Harden just because he played slightly better, in my opinion, in the regular season. Regular season, get regular season, not playoff, okay? Not playoff. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And don't forget to let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with me. And if you disagree, let me know who you guys think it is. Just make your list and post it down. And let me know if you want to see my latest videos. It's going to be right side of the screen. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe and make videos on it daily. All right, I'm out. See you guys next time. Kill it. Wow.